Present. Thank you. Councillor Brazil. Present. Thank you. Councillor Foss. I'm here. Thank you. Councillor Hodgson. Present. Thank you. Councillor Holway. Present. Thank you. Councillor Kemp. Present. Thank you. Councillor Long. Present. Thank you. Councillor Canahan. Present. Thank you. Councillor Pringle. Present. Thank you. Councillor Rowe. Present. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Present. Thank you. That's all uh, in attendance, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not getting on my video at the moment, and I'll struggle with that in a second. Um, we will go then from there to um, declarations of interest for this afternoon. Are there any others to the ones that the chairman asked for this morning? Hello. Councillor Brazil has uh, put in the box that he has an interest. Yeah, um, thank you, Councillor Foss. I'd just like to declare a personal interest in this application. It's um, 0265 stroke 20 stroke ARM, ARM um, merely because I've been involved in it right from the start and have been um, liaising with. Uh, many of the objectors, so it's just a personal interest. Thank you for that. Ah, I got my message box back. Sorry, I was struggling with that. Um, so this afternoon, then, if there are no other interests, we are dealing with application number 0265, oblique 20 ARM, field rear of 15 Green Park Way. And could we have... Cheryl, to present her um, application, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, so members will more than likely be familiar um, with this site. Um, it's, it's been to committee before. So it's, this is the reserve matters application for 62 dwellings. Um, it's a resubmission of the scheme which was um, refused by committee last year for 63 dwellings. There's an outline consent on the site for 65 dwellings, um, which was approved on the basis of there being a lack of a five-year housing land supply. And this, as a result, the site is allocated in the joint local plan under policy TTV 24. Um, so I've got a couple of updates for members. Um, officers have received um, several late objections over the last couple of days, one of which was received um, this morning. I believe members have been sent some of those and possibly sent some of those direct from the objectors. Um, reading through all the objections, the majority of issues raised have already been raised by objectors and are covered in the report. Um, there's a few additional matters which I will touch on now as part of the update. Um, so members will see there's condition number 18, um, which refers to details for a pump. Um, that pump, that condition is no longer needed because the current drainage scheme doesn't involve any pumping, so we can delete that condition. Um, the density of the development, I've stated it to be 28 dwellings per hectare in my report. Um, it's actually 20, well, roughly sort of 20, 21 per hectare. Um, so it's actually lower density than I've stated. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in the presentation. Um, it's also been raised about the potential for impacts on um, water discharge into the SSSI um, and picked up that there is a response from Natural England requesting more information. Um, there are four conditions on the outline consent for full details of drainage to be submitted prior to commencement. There's also conditions 15 and 16 on this um, application, which specifically relate to surface water drainage details and the impacts on the triple SI. Um, so as a result, um, we would propose to change the resolution to um, delegated approval subject to Natural England um, confirming they're satisfied with the drainage details that we've got. So moving on to the presentation. 
So the first slide that shows you the location of the site. So it's the hatched area in red, um, open countryside surrounding it to the north, and it sits against the built development of the village to the south. So again, this is just the aerial image of the site. So it's these three fields here. So I thought this would be useful to put in um, as a reminder for members, um, given that my report and the objectors refer to the constraints of the site. So we've got the tree preservation areas in green, the green shading down the bottom is the AOMB, so the site isn't actually in the AOMB itself. The conservation area of the village is this grey area. Um, reference is made to the site being in flood zone three, which it isn't. Flood zone three is a small area down the bottom here hatched. And this grey shaded area is flood zone three, um, flood, sorry, flood zone two. So that's just the site location plan. So it shows the different fields, existing hedgerows, um, and that's the building referred to in the report, the one that's going to be demolished. The top section up here is where there'll be a footpath link into Coleridge Lane. So we have a layout here um, which indicates where the affordable housing plots are going to be. So they're the ones uh, marked the blue dots, so hopefully that's clear enough, but they are a group in this area. So these are dwellings. These are the apartment blocks referred to. And then we also have the remaining affordable dwellings over on the eastern side the property. Um, so we have 35% affordable dwellings which is fixed in the section 106 outline stage which equates to 22 units. The age restricted dwellings secured in the section 106 are not actually um, identified at this stage. The section 106 requires them to be identified at a later date so they don't need to be identified right now. Um, and in terms of density it, you can see sort of the, the adjacent built up form of the village here. Um, the density of the site, 21 per hectare, as you can see from the comparison, it, it appears very similar, so it, it doesn't look out of character. Um, and we certainly wouldn't describe 21 dwellings per hectare as being overly dense. So this is just a closer up view of the layout of the site. So I'm not sure how clear that's coming across on the screen, so I won't dwell on that one. Uh, again, the applicant has provided this as a, a comparison of the reserve matters application that was refused by members. So the, the blue outline uh, is the refused scheme and the slightly paler grey um, is the current scheme before members. Um, so sort of it broadly follows the, the previously refused scheme. The key differences, um, the dwellings here have been altered. And these two blocks were the apartments, which are now located here. And we have bungalows taking their place. So this is the overall landscaping scheme that's been submitted with the application. And I've just put some stars on it, which indicate um, communal areas, areas of public open space. So they're not actually part of the dwellings. And I'll just quickly run through some closer up images of the drain of the landscaping of the site. Uh, so it shows the, the public open space here coming up into the entrance of the site, and that's some of the individual gardens. This is the hedgerow here that will be retained. Moving across the middle of the site, and then the eastern end of the site. Um, so this area here is going to be excluded from the gardens. It's where you'll see later on um, the attenuation area for the drainage is proposed. Um, I'll also point out what the objectors have referred to, and apologies, it's not terribly clear. This sort of along the bottom here is the bund, and these sort of lilac-y lines are the fences dividing up the gardens. So now moving on to the drainage scheme. So I'll just take this point to remind members that the outline consent has got four conditions requiring full details 
um, of drainage to be submitted and agreed prior to commencement. So this application does not seek to discharge those conditions, but has provided a quite detailed scheme to demonstrate that the site can be adequately drained um, in, a, in a, an attempt to overcome the refusal reason. So <clears throat> just point out the key features of this, and I have got these broken up slightly bigger later, but I thought it'd be useful. So the green dotted line running along the bottom is the bund. There is a swale kind of in the center of the site. The green boxes are individual soakaways in the properties. So it's pretty much the lower half of the site is served by soakaways. And then the dwellings at the top link into the attenuation tank. And there's also a separate highway attenuation tank at the bottom there, close to the highway access point. So just slightly closer up image of that, and apologies, it's probably gone a little bit blurry. And again, that shows the attenuation tank. So I would go back to that. Um, so at this point here, the highway attenuation tank is proposed to link into the highway mains drain. And at this end of the site, the large attenuation tank is proposed to connect into a new southwest water um, requisition. So I thought it would be useful to show members this was the indicative drainage scheme that was submitted as part of the outline application. So it's a very um, broad brush scheme. But again, it, it did propose to link into the highway drain here and again link into the, the sewer at this point. Um, each property was to have its own soak away. And this is part of the drainage scheme that members refused on the previous reserve matters application. Um, so again, it, it was similar in that it, there is a highway attenuation tank here. Each plot had its own soak away. So obviously the current scheme, there are less soak aways proposed. And that's the other end of the, of the scheme. So again, each dwelling had its own soak away and there was an attenuation tank in the bottom. So this is just the flood routing plan. And then moving on, I've, I've put this slide in. Some of the objectors have um, referred to another condition on the outline consent, which referred to compliance with approved plans. The original drawing submitted when this application first came in only had a pavement running down this side of the road. Um, the approved plan had two pavements on, so the applicant have amended their drawings. And as you can now see, there are pavements on both sides of the access, which follows the plan that was secured at outline stage. So moving on to some cross sections of the site. Again, it shows how the site slopes from top um, bottom down towards the existing properties. Uh, so this is a, a cross section of plot four, which hopefully you can make out it here is in the western end of the site. So it does show the, the proposed dwelling is at a higher level than the existing dwelling. Um, photos will show the boundaries in a moment. There is some planting already, but the landscaping scheme does secure additional planting here. And there's a back-to-back -back distance of approximately 34 metres. So we've got some other cross sections of the site. Um, so at the top here is plot two, which is in the western end. Then the next one down is plot 37, which is towards the middle of the site, moving to plot 43 and then 47, which are on the eastern end of the site. Um, generally, the back to back distance is um, sort of along, running along here with the existing properties in Green Park Way between 28 and 34 metres. At the far end, plot 47 it extends to 45 metres. Um, and yes, you can see from plot 47 is a lot higher than the existing property, but given that back to back distance and the landscaping that is proposed and there's an additional condition on securing additional 
planting in this area, let's consider that that meets the terms of the SPD and there won't be any significant um, neighbour impacts. Particular concern on the previous application was plot 44 and 45. Um, as you can see here, the top cross section shows the original elevations. Again, this, this house was going to be raised. The scheme has been amended and you can now see that dwelling has been set down. The yellow dotted line is existing ground level, so that the floor level of that dwelling is now below ground level, so it, it's a fair bit lower. But I would uh, mention that officers and members didn't raise any concerns or use it a refusal reason last time on neighbour impact. So moving on to the street scenes, um, it, it's very similar in appearance to the scheme members saw before, so I'll go through these quite quickly. So this is just a visual of how the site could look looking towards the east and this is the access road comes up here on the right hand side and that's looking in the opposite direction. So I've put this plan up because quite a few objectors have mentioned um, concerns about the heights of the dwelling. There's been reference made that the outline application stipulated there was to be no more than one and a half storeys high. Um, again, that was just a suggestion, I believe, from the landscape officer and there were no actual restrictions placed on the outline consent limiting the height. Um, so as you can see from here, the paler colour are single storey properties. So that's these two and there's several um, elements on the dwellings, uh, projections and garages at a single storey. The mid-tone colour is the one and a half storey, so that's predominantly the dwellings along here that could have the greatest impact on the neighbouring properties. And the majority of the actual two storey dwellings have been located on the north of the site where there's less impact. So I'll quickly run through the elevations, but they're pretty much unchanged from what members saw last time. Um, so these are the apartments. That's single story property. That's one of the two story, two bedroom properties. Slightly different design. Three bedroom, another three bedroom of a, a split level version. Again, a slightly different design of a split level three bedroom. Three bedroom with a garage. This is a four bedroom property with a garage. Another different design. Um, so moving on, on to the photos. Um, this one just gives you an overview of where the photos were taken from. So we've got the access. Um, first lot of photos are, are this area of the site and then the last few photos are over this area. So this is the access point on Green Parkway. Uh, so we've got existing property here and the other side of that hedge is another existing property. So the access road is going in at this point and <clears throat> that hedge row will be removed. So this is looking across to the western end of the site. This is the hedge row boundary with existing properties you can just see here. So this does show the site, how it slopes down towards the south. Okay, moving around slightly. So previous photo, I was stood around about here. So now that's the access point comes in at this point here. So again, this is looking down to the existing southern boundary. Moving around slightly so from a different angle. And this is from the other field. Um, to the right of the photo here, that's the northern boundary. That's the, the central hedgerow there. And you can just see the roofs of the existing properties in Green Park Way. And just turning around slightly further. And again, looking, this is the southern boundary along here, which provides a reasonable level of screening already for some of the properties. Um, some of them obviously have, have lesser hedgerow boundaries. And this is looking to the eastern boundary, so Coleridge Lanes on the other side. 
And the last image um, shows the existing properties to the north of the site. So as set out at the beginning of my presentation, um, subject to removal of condition 18, uh, the recommendation is delegated approval subject to Natural England, um, confirming they don't actually have an objection to the drainage. Thank you. Thank you very much for that um, presentation. Members, can we have any questions that you've got? I can see one coming in from Councillor Brazil. Councillor Brazil, would you like to uh, ask a question? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, my questions are, are, are slightly detailed questions about the drainage. I don't know if it's if it's if 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 uh, Miss Stansbury or, or um, Miss Montgomery might be better. Helen Montgomery from from Devon County might be better to try and answer them, please. Um, uh, I'll, I'll say what they are. First one is 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 in the report we talk about southwest water dealing with how the excess or flood water is removed from site um, but we don't actually have any indication as to where or how that's going to be done i wonder if we could have a few more details on that um, and my other one would be was that we've got the bund um, which i can see is act as some kind of defense against flood water but with the fences running down um, individually um, surely that would block any any transit of you know if you look at the flood escape plan I think with the arrows on it the blue arrows um, not that one there's another one that the, the, the fences are going to actually act as a barrier to stop any water running away and that would in the end just go through the bund and down into the backs of the houses at Green Park Way um, those, those, those are the, t the two main questions at the moment, Chairman. Okay, who's going to pick that one up? Those two questions up. Um, if I can just quickly talk about the bund, I mean, I think I'll leave the technical details for Helen to answer. Um, in terms of the fence with the bund, um, which let's see if I can find the drawing that shows that best. Oh, it's not uh, right. Yeah, so so this is the bund. Um, this, I mean, this was the landscaping scheme that was submitted, so it does show the fencing here. Um, I mean, if, if members were minded to approve the application, we could put on a condition um, for further details of the fencing in the area of the bund um, to to ensure that 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 was kept clear. Um, but I'll I'll hand over to Helen to. And to the question, the technical aspects. Okay. Thank you, thank Cheryl, you. and thank you, Councillor Long. Shall I turn on my video? If you can, please. Yes. So the question about the surface water requisition to the east of the site. A requisition is a legal agreement between the applicant and Southwest Water, and this can only be progressed once reserve matters has been granted for an application. It is likely that the requisition will be a new surface water sewer. There will not be any connection into the existing combined sewer. And Southwest Water have indicated that this is feasible. Does that satisfy you, Councillor Brazil? Um, well, it, yes, yes. I mean, it, it does to a certain extent. I mean, the, the trouble is, is we don't have any definitive answer. And the problem that I've got, and many of the local, much of the local community has, is that we know this is, is particularly along um, the A379 that is, there's, we get we get terrible flooding occurrences of flooding. Um, uh, what I'd like to know also is that if 
Southwest Water and the, the developer do come to an agreement or requisition, I think, as you called it. Uh, and yet the incidences of flooding, particularly down Coleridge Lane, uh, occur. Who, who, who carries responsibility for that? I think it would be Southwest Water because it would be their infrastructure. However, with the addition of this new sewer, there'll be less flows going into the combined sewer, so there'll be a betterment in terms of surface water on Coleridge Lane moving forward. Well, with with all due respect, that's the problem is we don't know yet, do we? Because because they haven't decided that. So uh, as it stands, we have uh, a situation where the flood water, excess water, um, is directed to pour down Coleridge Lane. Um, so, uh, um, you know, the problem that we've got here is that we know that we're, this floods frequently, and I think the flood two zone is just to the to the right of that picture there, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, members of the community and, and local residents want to be assured that there is in place a scheme that means they're not going to, yeah, flood two, if you see, so it goes um, just to the to the to the right of, of Coleridge Lane. You can see they're running down, and just to the right of those two flood zones. Um, and it seems to me that and that we don't have any. Um, you know, I'd like to know. I mean, in a way, you know, how can we take a decision when we don't know what Southwest Water are going to do on that? Anyway, I, I, you know, thank you. I mean, you, you've answered my question as far as it goes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brazil. Um, Councillor Long. Thank you, Chairman. Um, again, uh, Councillor Brazil has raised some of the points I was going to raise, so I've only got two left. Um, on the drainage plans, there is a comment where it says um, about the spring conveyance network that runs along the back of 9 to 14 and then out. I'd like an explanation as to how that actually works because it seems to sort of run out or, you know, does it just sort of soak away along the tree line there? The other thing that um, I'd like an explanation <clears throat> on the, um, it's, it's clear on the landscaping, the planting um, plans, there is a indicative root barrier and membrane location. Um, which is there to obviously prevent roots going into um, foundations or services. But the indication is that it seems to run halfway through or the middle of the, um, the bund that runs along through the site, but is also um, sort of tends to restrict the um, planting that is on that bund to one side that could push roots towards the um, properties below the existing, not the new build. And I just wanted an explanation as to the reasoning for that siting in that position. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, anybody got an answer for Councillor Long? I'm happy to answer the drainage related question. Right. Okay. Thank, thank you, Councillor you, Long. There is an existing land drain at the site which will be diverted with the application. It's in a current 150 pipe and it will remain in a 150 pipe and it will connect into the existing system to the south of the site. Um, and the details of the connection are actually a condition on this reserve matters application. And in relation to the bund, I'd like to say that the bund is a fail safe mechanism. It's not an integral part of the drainage strategy. In fact, it may never even be called into question. It's something that the applicant has put forth that is above really what we would require. Thank you for that. Coach Long, are you happy with that? I suppose moving away from the drainage, it might be an indication. I suppose the the root barrier, I'm just wondering why the root barrier is in place 
um, along through there, through that bund, or sort of basically, yes, it's through the bund, by where right close to where the trees are going to be planted, which seems to sort of um, push all the roots for the trees towards Green Park Way back gardens rather than being able to spread out equally. And I just wondered, you know, why that was or the reasoning for the uh, membrane. Perhaps the um, Mr. Lewis, maybe I'll answer that question when he comes on in a minute. If it's appropriate, I'll ask. Right. Well, yeah, I think you ought to. Right. Thank you. Um, Councillor Camp. Hello. Um, I'm a bit alarmed at, at the density of, of the site and how all the social housing and affordable housing is. Um, they've got really mean gardens and they're all grouped in, in small, small areas. Um, is this a question? Um, well, the question is, why is that? I mean, why? Why is that so, so dense? Um, in the social housing area and also um, why are we not using suds I thought that they were supposed to be used these days okay um, Miss Stansbury do you want to come back on that or do we go back to um... no I, I if I cover the affordable housing I'm just trying to find the drawing that shows it best yeah so here we go uh, so yeah, so affordable housing is in a cluster here um, and in a cluster there. Um, yes, they have got slightly smaller gardens than the other dwellings. Um, they are smaller properties. Obviously, affordable dwellings are kept um, smaller in size in according with local housing need. And to obviously, it keeps the value of the houses lower. Um, for example, you know, if these were the affordable houses, looking at the, the, you know, just the size of those properties, they would not be affordable to anybody. Um, I mean, ideally, affordable dwellings, it's, it is preferred to have them pepper potted through schemes, but in terms of future management, that always makes them difficult. Um, so they have grouped them in sort of two distinct areas. Um, and I think that probably about covers it. I mean, we, we've not got any objection from the affordable housing team. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to check the report. I'm not sure if they did actually comment on this application. Just bear with me. Uh, yeah, so the, our affordable housing um, specialists have supported the application. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Councillor Abbott. You have a question? Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Is there any technical reason why there cannot be soakaways within each individual housing plot? Uh, Mr. Mon yeah, Montgomery, I would think for that, please. Yes, thank you, Councillor Abbott. The site has a gradient of one in eight. And we are concerned about the risk of the groundwater re-emerging elsewhere in Chillington if the whole site was to infiltrate. And this was brought up at the outline application stage as well. Therefore, to reduce the risk of this happening, there was the attenuated strategy also approved at outline. So that's the reason why there's a hybrid strategy submitted today. But presumably the um, ground acts as a natural soak away at the moment and no such problem exists. No, at the moment, most of the runoff pours off this site because of the clay layer, whereas the soak aways are proposed underneath the clay layer. So have you got a geological understanding that how, how far this clay layer exists? Yes, there's been extensive site investigation taken out um, at this site. Three sets of infiltration testing has been undertaken, as well as a year's worth of groundwater monitoring. I believe the clay layer 
lies at 1.6 metres um, underneath the surface and all the soakaways are located underneath this clay layer. Yes, that's part of it. But how far south does the clay layer go? Does it go past the existing houses, for instance? A borehole suggests that there is um, some clay layer um, within the village in Chillington, but it's outside the scope of the drainage strategy to do such an investigation outside of the red line boundary for the site. Therefore, Ms Montgomery, your, your suggestion that there could be a re-emergence of water from underneath the clay layer is supposition, and it could just as well carry on down into the bottom of the valley. Well, that's why we're asking for a hybrid strategy to be put forward to reduce the risk of groundwater re-emerging elsewhere. Yes, yes, but you're, you're suggesting the hybrid strategy because you're supposing that the water will re-emerge, whereas if the clay layer was continuous, it wouldn't re-emerge, it would go down to the bottom of the valley. Yes, but we don't know the extent of the clay layer outside the site boundary and it would be unreasonable to ask the applicant to do that investigation. I've stopped. Okay. Katie Robert, are you finished? Um, well, I, um, because I'm slow of thought, uh, Councillor Foss, uh, I haven't got a, a comeback at the moment, um, and well, so I, I've stopped my questioning. That's fine. If you feel that you need to come back later, I will allow you to, because we are we are talking about the important factor of, of the flooding on that site. Um, can we now go to Councillor Holway, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah. I don't know if um, Helen Montgomery's had the opportunity to read Dr. Bennett's um, reports or objections. Um, they've only been available for a couple of days, but they do seem to make an awful lot of sense, as did his arguments at the last time we looked at this application. And I just wondered if if Miss Montgomery would like to comment on on um, Dr. Bennett's report. Yes, I have had a chance to review his um, last minute submission, and I don't think they raise anything that I have already rebutted previously in numerous um, briefing notes that I have submitted. This is an extremely robust drainage solution which has been proposed for the site. We're fully supportive of this. A range of SUDS solutions are proposed which offers a benefit to the residents of Green Parkway and also in the Ryder Village. Um, a treatment train is being proposed with the use of the permeable paving and the swale and there's a connection into the existing highways network and the applicant is committed to undertaking required repair works on this network at their own expense so we feel a betterment is being offered with this current strategy okay um do you think that rainwater harvesting tanks um, for all the houses would improve the situation? They could be used to provide some form of attenuation, but the applicant has provided the required level of attenuation in line with the non-statutory technical standards. Okay, thank you. Um. I don't seem to got any further questions. Is there any other questions on the, other than flooding on the on the site before we move on to the Thanks next Robert, speaker? Councillor Abbott would like. Oh to yeah, come sorry. Back. Yeah, yeah. I see that. Thank you, Councillor Abbott. Thank you very much. 
Sorry to be so slow on this. So on this particular plan, we have a, a number of soakaways. I think it's, it's not possible to read, of course, but I think they're the green ones that are outlined. And so the uh, engineering assessment is that these will work with the clay layer, but more won't. And I, I, I remain confused as to why, how you could come to a judgment uh, that, that this is the solution and not one with individual soakaways on every plot. Hmm. Thank you. If there's more water infiltrating into the ground, there's more risk of the groundwater re-emerging elsewhere in Chillington and also of slope destabilisation due to the increase in moisture levels in the soil. We feel the solution that's being presented here today um, is the best solution for the site because there is partial infiltration, which is the top preference in terms of the drainage hierarchy, as well as um, attenuation into the highways network and into the southwest water network at extremely reduced rates. Yes, uh, you, you happen to choose the verb uh, that you feel this is the answer. Presumably, you have um, you have modelled this. You've got uh, both observations and calculations that you uh, would stand by that defend this particular choice of the number of soakaways. Yes, the drainage system has been extensively modelled by the applicant's drainage consultants, and the results indicate that it um, is in line with our local standards and with national standards. So we have calculations um, to prove that the site will drain effectively. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Montgomery. Uh, Councillor Long. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not sure whether it's here that needs to come in. I note under biodiversity it says the officer's report says it's addressed fully at outline stage. And obviously recognise that drainage, flood issues, you know, um, are principal sort of here and the main concern that we've had in the past. But one issue sort of that I tend to pick up on these developments is I note there's no indication of bat boxes, swift boxes, or bee bricks um, within this development to contribute to biodiversity gain. And I wondered whether the officer had any uh, comment on this. I know it says it was fully addressed at outline stage, but that was only 2016. And I'm surprised not to see any in this development. Yeah, um, I am just finding the list of what was secured outline stage. Um, so we've got the landscape and ecology management plan, which is part of the section 106. So they've got to submit details of that. Um, also, £71,612 towards the provision of replacement cell bunting habitat. Um, what I would also say is mindful of the age of that outline planning application, bearing in mind it was submitted in 2016. Um, approved in March 2018. Obviously, that was before the current joint local plan and way before our SPD. So, obviously, those requirements are something that are new. Um, the outline application predates those. So, it would be unreasonable, us, um, the unreasonable of us now at reserve matter stage to introduce those requirements. Um, so, when I say it, you know, it was addressed at outline stage, that's essentially secured in the landscape and ecological management plan. Chairman, could I just pass a comment that we did um, within the K5 development um, that has a sort of similar time scan, in fact, um, a little bit earlier, um, that recently went before this committee. The developer did include, and within the um, the reserve matters, there were such things as bat boxes, swift boxes, and bee bricks um, included. So I'm surprised that the uh, developer hasn't um, indicated a contribution or a move in this direction. Right. Have we finished question? 
the questions on um, of Miss Stansbury? No, we haven't we got uh, Councillor Hudson, please. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, just very briefly, um, recognising, as I do, because I've been on this committee quite a long time, that this came to us some years ago, and the main issue that was raised at the time was around flooding. Um, we've now declared this climate emergency four years down the line, and a lot of things have changed since then. Surely we can't be expected to be bound by something that is actually not, well, it is of our making, because it's man-made climate change, but... Um, it seems to me that this is since flooding is such a specific thing around this surely we have to take into account and be able to rethink um on the under the current situation that we know now about the the unpredictable and much heavier um wet weather that we are, are getting and indeed storms which could have a major impact on this so can we have assurance that um the new plans coming forward take into account all of that recognition now that we do actually recognize that we have much more unstable weather I'm happy to answer this. Thank you, Councillor Hodgson. The Environment Agency issued new guidance on, on climate change allowances in March of this year, and this application and its calculations fully comply with that. In addition, um, the calculations have a factor of safety of 10, when in actual fact, a factor of safety of two or three would satisfy us as the LLFA. So um, we are really happy that the scheme is in line with the current climate change projections and figures. OK, Councillor Hodgson. Well, not really, but I'm, I heard what she said. Thank you. Yeah. Well. I think it's time we've asked a lot of questions on the flood. I know that's very important. I think members are going to have to make our own minds up on what they've heard from uh, the, the um, so far um, on you know whether they think it's satisfactory or not. I'm, I'm as interested in what is the actual whole site, whether that's acceptable. There don't seem to be any more questions on that. So I am going to now move on to our objector. Uh, who is um, Miss Miss Cat Harlington? Are you there, Alison? Um, um, I'm here. Hi, it's it's Millis, it's it's Alison here. Can you yeah, hear me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, if you'd like to. Um, could could start I just your... could I introduce myself first before I start my five minutes? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, go on. OK, my name is Alison Cad Harlington. I represent the Green Parkway Association, which has around 120 members across Chillington and beyond. So it's not just me, basically. No. OK, okay. You, know, you know you've got five minutes. Um, I know. I'll gallop. OK, <laughs> the table being dis oh, Hopefully there's a table. There's no table. There was a table to be displayed. Uh, the end of... Cheryl's, um, the very last page should be my table. Okay. Aha. Ooh. Right, okay. Shall I, I'm going to start again. Yeah, I'll let you do that. Okay. The table right. being displayed now is from the applicant's own submissions. It is also shown in the briefing document sent to you by Dr. Bennett. This is one of the many reasons the residents of Chillington are worried. South Devon receives high levels of sustained rainfall. The repeated storm events earlier this year are a prime example. This table shows the proposed surface water drainage system could have gone into flood status during events like that. The drainage is and always has been the biggest issue of this site right from outline planning. The root cause is the density and layout of the houses on the site. Therefore, the solution has always lain with the applicant, but in five years, they have not been willing to address that. However, at outline planning, the original application was submitted with a SUDS compliant on-site drainage scheme, with every home having a soak away, just as we have here in, in Green Parkway now. Despite misgivings, the then DMC members and officers were so reassured by that original scheme, they created a condition which particularly reference the very comprehensive flood risk assessment document and the drainage layout it contained. 
That assessment and drawing could not have been more specific. Clearly, the principle of on-site infiltration using individual soakaways was important to the application gaining online outline planning approval. That condition was intended to protect Chillington and the members of this committee. The planning system and the public rely heavily on planning conditions being upheld and enforced. It helps applications to keep moving through the planning system and reassures objectors. To ignore condition 19 of the outline planning is to set a dangerous precedent for planning applications and decisions in the future. We are asking why. Why the original outline planning application on-site infiltration scheme was abandoned. Four drainage and flood risk specialists, including Dr Bennett and DCC flood risk team, have all agreed the site is suitable for infiltration. So why is that being disregarded? The previous scheme, refused last year by this committee, was actually nearer the principle of on-site infiltration, albeit using badly sited and unacceptable communal tanks and pumps. That's the point. It was communal tanks primarily, not individually so in placed soakaways, as stated now by the officer. This current scheme rips up the original on-site infiltration principle, along with condition 19, and steps back to 60 years ago in the days when developers could do as they liked and climate change was unheard of. To say the principle of on-site infiltration and suds complaint private soakaways is similar to stripping a three hectare area of a large amount of its surface water and discharging it off site is like saying a responsible dog owner is the same as one who opens their front door and lets the dog out and hopes for the best. The currently proposed system does just that, irresponsibly sending the problem elsewhere. The current scheme collects surface water from 70% of the properties and discharges it off site to the southeast corner into an area that already floods every winter. Nothing has been published about what happens to it then, and South West Water have stated to us that no route is agreed. We all know it will be lower down the drainage hierarchy, into or around the village and into an open water course, then onto the estuary through level two and three flood risk zones. Do the flood risk team know the full agreed route? If not, how can they competently say there will be no increased flood risk for Chillington? We also cannot see how an important flood management feature, a raised bun, can be allowed to run through the fenced private back gardens of the new home. Unlike a soakaway, it is an above ground feature vulnerable to obstruction and removal. Its position and function affects the layout of the gardens and fences along the southern boundary. The bund is not even mentioned in the drainage maintenance schedule, yet it is intended to play a vital role in the flood routing plan. The flood risk team also states it will offer betterment to those on Green Park Way, which makes no sense. So our request to the members is please do not allow the original outline planning application conditions be disregarded by the developer or accept the officer's view that they are not set in stone. We believe that conditions are not mere guidance. They are important and there for a reason. In this case, the reason for condition 19 has become more important. Without it, the drainage system will degenerate to a basic bath with a plug hole system that will create issues for decades to come. As the case officer has stated in her report, the layout and the drainage are intrinsically linked. We appreciate condition 19 as a pre-commencement condition. However, it's clear that the layout will need to change to accommodate soakaways, as well as the fences repositioned to free up the bond to a public area. Therefore, we ask you to refuse this application to enable the already existing condition 19 to be fully met. Thank you to the committee. Thank you. Very good timing as well. Um, <laughs> Any any questions, members? No, I can't see any questions on my box, so that's okay. Well, thank you very much for your presentation, and we will now move on to the supporter, uh, Mr. Edward Lewis. If you're there, sir. Yes, thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Ed Lewis, Regional Director of ACORN in Exeter. Um, as you know, this site is allocated in the local plan for 65 dwellings and received outline consent in March 2018. Therefore, as stated by the officer in her report, the principle of this development and the number of units it can accommodate is firmly established. The previous reserve matter submission was deferred at committee in July 2019 and was subsequently refused in September 
19 against officer's recommendation for appro uh, approval. This refusal has been appealed and a decision is expected in the next couple of months. This revised matter submission was made in February 2020 with a target termination date of May 2020. We're currently in October. The officer's recommendation is once again for approval. During this time, the government has reiterated its build, build, build agenda, which will undoubtedly increase housing numbers required in the South Hams. Allocated sites such as this, therefore, must be delivered quickly and effectively. Since the outline approval of this site, we have worked tirelessly with the local flood authority, highways, South Ham District Council officers and other consultees to design a bespoke residential scheme, which is of high quality in terms of design, respects its setting on the edge of Chillington, deals with a number of difficult technical issues, including, but by no means limited to drainage, while still delivering 35% tenure blind affordable housing. The flood authority provided very detailed and lengthy comment on the drainage and have no objections to our proposal. And in fact, have stated that our proposed drainage strategy provides significant betterment for Chillington as a whole. No other objections have been raised in terms of landscape, design, layout, neighbour amenity or highways, or indeed any other matter. And this reflects the significant amount of time and effort invested into the design of this site. The reserve, a revised reserve matter submission before you today provides local people with a number of improvements over the previous scheme, which is currently subject to the but there is absolutely no tangible benefit for us as the developer in the changes that we have made. I hope, however, <clears throat> that that shows that we've listened to the views of local people and have done all that we can be reasonably asked to do to mitigate the perceived impacts of this proposal and still deliver a high quality bespoke development with 35% affordable housing and fully in accordance with the council's own site allocation. ACOM, the Flood Authority, Highways and South Ham's District Council and many others have dedicated huge amounts of time and resources to this site over the last two years. And I believe that the result of all this hard work is a proposal that accords with the allocation, the outline permission, delivers a high quality bespoke environment, respects its setting and its neighbours, and is one that should be approved by committee in accordance with the officer's recommendations. I would therefore urge you to approve this reserve matters application today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions? I don't see any on my list. Thank you. No? The Chairman, I, if I could ask a question. Yes, certainly. Carried to Brazil. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Lewis, for your presentation. Um, can I just ask, um, obviously, with our new adopted um, uh, joint local plan um, we and and with with the moving forward of, of the climate emergency agenda could you I, I just wonder if you could explain how you are addressing our dev policy dev 30 which is meeting the community no um, sorry I've got that one wrong um, dev 32 delivering low carbon development. Mr. Lewis, are you there? So, um, yes, microphone's turned off. Yes, uh, we, we all do that. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I can give you a full answer to that, in short. Um, we, have, we have submitted the application, all of the applications, in accordance with the policies as understood to be, in close consultation with everybody that we need to speak to. And I believe we've addressed all of the concerns from everybody fully. Um, so. I'm not a planner and I can't address that specific point, but I go back to my main point, which is we have spent a long time in consultation with everybody who is a consultee and have satisfied every point that they've made at every turn. So um, without being a, a planner, I can't give you that specific answer, but I think we have addressed it as part of the application. No, you haven't. Uh, right, okay. Um, who have we got next? Have we got uh, uh, that was Councillor Brazil. Is this Mark Lo Councillor Long? Do you want to ask a question? Yes, please. I'll go back to the um, sort of the two questions that I asked previously. Um, Miss Lewis, thanks for your um, presentation. 
I did identify in um, the plans that there there is a membrane that is installed in various places, which is uh, as is classed indicative root barrier membrane, which is obviously within the areas of services. They say building foundations. It appears to run through the middle of the bund that runs down um, on the southern edge, and would restrict the uh, root growth of the trees and everything that's being put into that bund. And it would also sort of tend to indicate that the surface, if it is being put in to protect the um, surface drainage pipe work route, it would seem that that pipe work route is going underneath the bund as well. I wonder if you can um, sort of give me an indication as to why that uh, membrane is in there. Um, and it's its position because it seems a little bit strange to me to restrict the um, it's not it's sensible to restrict it from roots and going into pipework but it seems to push all the roots to the south towards the properties in green park way and if i can just ask the other one is obviously you've got the principle of development but one of the things that you know is my own um area that i am concerned about is the increase increasing the biodiversity of the site or compensating for biodiversity loss and i'm quite surprised that in revising this and going through all these changes that you've done here that you haven't incorporated um, into the buildings any bat boxes swift boxes or bee bricks which would have contributed to um, clawing back some of the biodiversity loss there and i'd appreciate your comments on that please uh, in relation to the first one, I'm going to sound a bit like a stuck record, but it is a highly technical and specialised area, and I'm not qualified to comment on it. Um, what I will say is, obviously, our consultants have discussed it with the landscaping officers and with the flood authority, and that is the that is the outcome of it. Um, so I, I don't know the answer, I'm afraid, um, and I can't I can't really give you anything else on that. Um, Mr. Lewis, that's a fair response. In terms of the biodiversity gain, again, in terms of what we what we need to do and where policy is, I think I believe we've responded to that. And again, the consultees are happy. Um, as a general point, um, going forward, obviously we have got to do a um, environmental management plan, and it will form part of that. Um, and I'm, we're very happy to have conversations about bat boxes, bird boxes, and, and bee boxes. Um, it's, the, it's, it's when is the appropriate time to, to have those discussions and put them in, and what 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 can we do to to improve it? Okay. Answer your question, Coach Long. Um, I'll be happy to see further discussions when the environmental management plan is being discussed. That those are incorporated in at some future point. All right. Your comments have been noted. Um, Councillor Kemp. Hi there, um, Mr. Lewis. The um, build, build, build strategy that you mentioned. Um, surely that's not supposed to be at the cost of the environment or the surrounding community. I don't think you've addressed anything that you say you have satisfactorily. Um, I think all developers have a responsibility to climate change and biodiversity, and I don't think this site um, does that. Sorry, I was muted then. Um, that was more a s statement than a question, Councillor Kemp. Has he got a response? You, uh, Mr. Lewis, if you want to respond to that, you may. I think only that, again, repeating myself, there is policy that we adhere to and we have, have, have adhered to it in consultation with the consultees. Um, and we can be expected to do no more. OK, thank you very much. Um, I don't think there's any further questions. Um, just to say, um, yeah, the officer would uh, 
Officer Stansbury would like to come back if you if you would like it. Yeah, just a just yeah. a couple of things to pick up on for members' questions. Um, Council Brazil asked about um, Dev thirty two. Um, again, it, it's kind of repeating what I said about um, Councillor Long's question about biodiversity. Obviously, the outline application was approved prior to the adoption of the joint local plan, which carried um, policy Dev thirty two, but. Um, on the outline permission, we do have condition 15, um, which requires details of how at least 10% um, of the energy supply of development should be secured from a decentralised renewable or low carbon energy supply. Um, details of energy efficiency measures and fabric first approach. So whilst that is below the current Dev 32, 20% requirement for major development, it is a part of this. Again, it would be unreasonable for us now to go back and try and implement a policy that wasn't in place at the time that outline was approved. Um, and yet more than happy when it comes to um, agreeing the um, ecological management plan, section 106 and condition that you know we can make sure we get um, additional biodiversity measures in there. That's all I wanted to say, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Right. Um, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Uh, I don't think there's any further questions. Um, we don't have anybody from the Parish Council, I believe. So next on the list is Ward Member Councillor Julian Brazil. So, Councillor Brazil, would you like to um, make your comments, please? Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, and I'll, I'll try to be brief because I think that um, Alison from the Green Park Way uh, Association or grouping of people um, made all the relevant points for very succinctly uh, and I hope that you will follow her, her, her lead on that. Um, this application has been a problem for us right from the start uh, and it hasn't been helped by what was one of the major issues, drainage, being signed off at, at uh, outline planning stage as a pre-commencement condition, uh, which means that we have never had a satisfactory drainage scheme, just a, a, a jam tomorrow promised to us. Um, throughout this scheme, it appears to me that we have been trying to force square pegs into round holes. Um, the, the applicant, and I totally appreciate that, has dis, has tried to maximise the uh, amount of properties on this site. But what should have happened is that a sustainable drainage scheme should have been adapted first and then the site designed around that. And that has not been the case. So now we find ourselves in the position whereby rather than going for infiltration, which was agreed at outline planning stage, which our outline planning stage had a soak away in every single individual garden and was accepted as this was a way forward. We have now moved way beyond that. Only I think 17 of the 65 houses now have individual soak aways. The rest of the water is being kept in an attenuation tank and then piped off site. It may well work for the site itself, but what about all the residents of Chillington, uh, of uh, uh, a Green Park Way as it floods down into Chillington along the A379? We already have massive problems down the bottom of Coleridge Lane, and, and you'll know that when there's a flood, when there's heavy rain, it's impassable along a, the A379. The idea that we're going to put more water in there is just unacceptable. But it goes beyond that. Um, if you read in the report from Frogmore Parish Council, which is downstream, they know full well that with the climate changes that we have and the amount of heavy rain we get, that on numerous occasions it is impassable, almost impossible to get across the A739, the A379 into Frogmore because of the flooding down the down those down the the, the down the stream that runs into the estuary. So. We find ourselves in a position that now the buck has been passed to Southwest Water. So Southwest Water is going to come up with an idea 
that they will have that they will somehow get rid of that water uh, without without adding to the flooding problems of everyone downstream. I'd like to see them try. But the catch 22 situation is they won't actually do that until the reserve matters is approved. So again, we find ourselves in a situation that we're being promised jam tomorrow about something which I don't think is ever achievable. So um, I've mentioned, I, uh, Councillor Long mentioned Dev 26 about the dive biodiversity. I've mentioned Dev 32. Um, I appreciate that the planning officer has come in and that we do have we do have some control over that um, uh, in respect of uh, uh, of, of, make, of building a, a carbon a lower carbon footprint development. Um, but overall, I think that once again we should refuse this application, put our communities first, and say that we are not prepared to accept a, uh, a finger in the wind possibility that actually the flooding issues might go away because I don't think they will. Um, so I would propose to remove, to move a refusal on this application. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Brazil. Um, so we've had a move, move, you've moved refusal. Uh, right, can we now go into um, the full debate. Um, I haven't got anybody here. I've had a, a question in, in, the, in the chat box, and I think I've answered that. Um, members, who's going to go first? I don't know whether my internet's a little bit slow. Uh, Councillor Rabbit. Thank you. Um, it's the overwhelming number of contributions about the flooding which seems to uh, make me so worried about this scheme. And um, I'm unconvinced by the experts' opinion that uh, they can not model, they cannot measure the extent of the clay layer, uh, they can come up that half the houses can have a soak away, but the rest of them cannot. It seems to me that this is a, an argument with holes in it. And since this would take away the objections of the people who are worried about flooding, I just don't think that they're addressing us properly. We have no facts and figures from their side to to, to back up the, this argument, um, even though I, I, I do take great store by um, um, someone with an expertise in this subject area. I'm, I'm, I'm so concerned about this whole flooding issue that, that, that I second uh, Councillor Brazil's motion. Thank you, Councillor Abbott. Okay. Uh, Councillor Hodgson. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I'm obviously, well, not obviously, but I'm going to sort of uh, join in on this general level of concern regarding the flooding issue. I mean, I've been on this committee, as I said earlier, a long time, so I've been here for many of the previous presentations. And um, I believe this is still remains over development of the site in, in with regard to, as Councillor Priscilla said, what you can try and squeeze onto a site when you look at the kind of the natural constraints. So, um, I mean, particularly with the reference to the proximity to the flood zones two and three, um, at a previous a presentation to this committee, there was a series of photos were produced. I think it was the parish council that had them, and it was of a, free, a previous flooding incident. It was a big booklet. I've actually still got it, and it was it just shot, told a terrible tale. Now that was then. That was before all the uh, natural infiltration of this of this of the land above was able to help i mean what they should really be doing with this land is actually filling it with trees so it actually produces lots of little air holes that any flooding any waters coming down won't do runoff it will actually go before it actually hits those houses that are there already and um, this added, added development can only add to the problem um, in terms of not only the fact it's taking up an opportunity for natural filtration, but also new developments, all houses which are connected to the mains water, are bringing water onto the site. 
and that water has to go somewhere. So, for example, you know, the drain, the water isn't natural, isn't coming from, you know, what's coming from the air, which could be helped a bit, as was said earlier. They could help a bit by having water butts so that people can water their gardens with things. But nevertheless, the amount of average, average amount of water that an average household uses and multiply that up by this large number of houses that are going onto the site. That's a lot of extra water being brought onto the site. And unfortunately, when we know that we've got weather coming, we don't all suddenly get a warning saying, don't use your taps and don't flush the loo too often. In other words, don't put too much more water into the system, the natural drainage. So it is being overtaxed already and it would be overtaxed even more. I think that, you know, as I've said earlier, the whole issue around climate emergency, which we're now, you know, this council has now taken on board and admitted, taken on that declaration, accepts that we do have a difficult situation that we're in. And it's going to take years of mitigation of behaviour change and reducing our, car, our greenhouse gases to actually bring us down to some kind of safe level, because it's going to get worse before it gets better, a bit like um, with the ozone layer, when that, the hole in the ozone layer got worse. But now it's, it's, it's reversed because of behaviour change. So we can do it. But um, nevertheless, just to get back to what we're deciding today, I've always believed that this is this large scale development in the site and the potential for the flooding is, is impossible to address. I think where the attenuation tank has been put puts those houses immediately below it, which we've been on site visit visits, those houses immediately below. I wouldn't want to live there and I don't think I should therefore impose it on somebody else and I think it would be reckless of me to, to vote in favour of this application which I have had gross grave reservations from all of, all the way along and the new new sort of proposals that have come forward you're still trying to deal with a massive amount of extra water and I just don't think it actually fits within the natural constraints of the site so I should be voting against I'm sorry Okay, thank you, Councillor Hodgson. Um, next is Councillor Rowe. Oh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Well, uh, listening to the debate, and I echo much of actually what Councillor Hodgson has said. Um, I'm not a drainage expert, and I don't think many of us are on this committee either. We can only rely on what we are told by those who have the knowledge. and how water is expected to act, but we know one thing is for certain, water always naturally runs downhill. And I feel for the residents, the people who particularly live on the higher side of Green Park Way adjoining this site. It is a year since we previously considered this application. We held a site meeting then, having previously done so in 2016. This site has been rumbling on for four years after having been granted outline permission in 2016. And we are now yet again considering reserved matters. But are we any further on? Do we as members feel any clearer in our minds that the flood protection schemes will work for the residents of Green Park? Uh, I have my doubts and I wouldn't like to impose this upon those people living in those houses on the lower side because I wouldn't want to live there myself. I wonder why this site ever came forward in the first place and was granted outline permission um, in 2016. This application is giving so many problems arising from the land levels being on the slope above Green Park Way. So, Chairman, um, I'm sorry, but I can't really make up my mind as yet. Thank you. We'll listen to see if anybody else has things, anything to say. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rowe. I'm going to allow um, Helen Montgomery to come back. Uh, she's asked if she can speak again, and I think, assuming we're uh, having so many problems with this flooding thing, that I think she needs to be able to speak. So. Um, Helen, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, Councillor Foss. I would like to point out that we were happy with the reserve matters. Sorry, with the reserve matters application last year, which was refused, and we're more than satisfied with this application, which meets our local standards as well as the national standards. I, there is no way there will be an increase in flow into the Frogmore Creek. There's currently 23 litres per second coming off this site during heavy rainfall. 
The two proposed discharges are at one litres per second and two and a half litres per second. As I've already said, South West Water are happy with the proposal, and so is the Environment Agency. The applicant has proposed a range of sustainable drainage techniques in line with best practice. The principles of both infiltration and attenuation were approved at outline, so this proposal is wholly in line with condition 19. We have provided an impartial review of the application and we've worked very closely with the drainage engineers for the past year to get to this stage and we are more than happy with the application. We feel it's the best drainage solution for the site and will provide a significant improvement on the surface water regime in the village. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, where do we go from here now? Um, any more questions? Any more comments? So, um, I don't know really where to go to actually now with this one, other than to go to the vote, to be honest. Uh, we do have um, a proposal and seconded for refusal. Um, Janice, have we got anything else? Could you give me advice on that? Is that the correct procedure now? It, it would be, but um, Councillor Taylor has just put in that he has a question. Oh, so he has. Right. Councillor Taylor, would you like to... Yes, speak, thank you, please? Chairman. I, I'm, I'm totally confused on this one because I can't see much difference in this and the last one. And, um, I mean, there is going to be an extra water on there because of the water that comes in via the mains water. It's not just rainwater, is it? I mean, because that that is there and whatever it is, but I mean, I, I agree with Councillor Rowe that there's no way that you would want to be below this um, development. And it's this sloping site. Um, somebody said they couldn't understand where it passed in the first instance, but it did. And obviously the answer from um, the last uh, lady was that it's the best they could offer for this site. But that doesn't mean it's the answer to the flooding, does it? It means it's the best answer they got to this particular site, not particularly, um, you know, they, the site's there and this is the best they can offer. But that doesn't mean to say it's going to alleviate the problem, does it? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for that, Councillor Taylor. No, I hear what you say. Um, Mrs. Yes, Fold would like to speak. Becky, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, Chairman. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. I can uh, anyway. <laughs> just, just two points. Firstly, is obviously before the vote, um, you will, we will need to take uh, the reasons for refusal. Uh, but secondly, and I don't say this lightly, but members will recall that we refused the previous application for reserve matters, and that is now um, the subject of an appeal. And in the course of that appeal, the applicant has put forward a full application for costs, um, pre predominantly on the basis uh, that uh, the reasons regarding uh, were, were really about drainage rather than about design and layout. Um, and it wasn't clear from the reasons for refusal on that scheme as, as to why it had been refused, according to the to the uh, uh, applicant, the appellant. We have, of course, given a response to that uh, cost application, but I must say that I am not clear that uh, were we to refuse on this application, that we wouldn't be in the same position. I'm certainly confident that we would be. And having listened to um, Mrs. Montgomery uh, in, in answer to all of your questions, including the items on uh, climate change, you know, bringing it up to date, um, she is satisfied that this is a better scheme than the one that was originally approved, uh, refused. So I think we are in more of danger of a uh, successful cost application were we to refuse this one uh, than the previous scheme. Um, I, I do appreciate um, that you don't like to be 
fully, so to speak, regarding cost applications, but I do want to make sure that all members are aware of the position that we are with the current appeal and what we may be facing with the with the second um, uh, re refusal if we go ahead in that way. Thank you. So, um, if we are moving to the vote, I am. Um, can I get the reasons for refusal, please? That's where we're going next. Yes, uh, reasons yeah. for uh, turning it down. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, the, the reasons are very similar to um, the reason why we turned down the last application, and that is because of a uh, uh, an unsatisfactory drainage scheme, uh, in our view. Um, and I hasten to add that uh, it's all very well doing a dex desk exercise when you're talking about drainage, but if you actually live it and breathe it uh, and live down the bottom of Coleridge Lane, um, you know, it's a slightly different perspective. Um, but what I will say is that, um, that the drainage scheme will, would require a complete rearrangement and fresh application of the layout of the uh, of of this site, uh, and 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 therefore um, we refuse it. I appreciate that it's a that it's that it's a it's a pre commencement condition, but in my view, and I hope the rest of the committee's view, is that in order to come up with a satisfactory drainage scheme, you will have to redesign uh, the layout and the layout of the, of the housing scheme, and therefore. That would require a new planning application in itself. Um, Mr. Weimer, are you happy with those reasons? Um, that's no. a very you, that's a very you, that's, a, you, that's, a, that's a very difficult very difficult question to to the wrong, answer, the wrong word. I'm sorry, Be, but. because I fully support the officer recommendation for approval and I in, in many ways I'm surprised at how easily members are simply dismissing the professional opinion of Helen Montgomery who is the, the drainage expert at Devon County Council that that, that we use. Um, the, the, so, so I think this is one of those where members members have to come to a decision um, am I comfortable that the the, the 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 reason for refusal is easily defendable at appeal? No, no, I'm not. If I'm being totally honest, I think I'd like to turn it. I, I think Councillor Brazil turned the reason for refusal round, and it, it sounded better the second time round, where it's based. I think, and I apologise, Councillor Brazil. I think I'm always putting words in your mouth, but I think you're saying that 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 you are you are you're not persuaded that the current layout can facilitate an adequate surface water drainage scheme or words or, or words to that effect so so therefore this layout is unacceptable because the layout would have to change to to have a satisfactory drainage scheme i think that's what you're saying in which case that's that's the um the reason for refusal that we'll go forward with yeah that, yes i'm very happy with that chairman thank, thank you mr weimer for for clarifying that Okay, um, Ms. Long, have you got have you got those reasons written down to to your satisfaction? Yes, Chair. Thank you. Okay, so um, I have said nothing about this application at all. I made my feelings very strongly about the, the the flooding in the past, and I understand where everybody's coming from at the moment. But I am torn now that we you know that they've come back with a. Uh, a drainage scheme that Miss Montgomery is backing wholeheartedly. Um, we've got other experts that say that what she says is incorrect, and I sympathise with all the um, councillors in the committee at the moment. Um, we're all torn. We know the repercussions if things go very wrong, yet we also have to represent the residents that put us in a position to make these decisions. And um, 
this is, as Couch to Brazil has said, this site has been a right pain in the butt, excuse my language, ever since it started. We, we got off on the wrong foot and it's caused us some real problems. Um, so uh, I'll say that. So, um, Ms. Young, if you like to lead the um, the uh, members' uh, vote, um, will you do so, please? Chairman, I just think before that, I think Councillor Rowe wanted some clarification. Oh, yes, sorry. I didn't pick up on that. Yes, Councillor Rowe, please go forward. Well, I didn't, I didn't want to speak. I just wanted Janice to repeat the reasons yeah. for the refusal, please. That's fine. Before the vote. Um, to uh, summarise, and I will take it off the recording later, but uh, the councillor is not persuaded that the current layout can facilitate the adequate drainage scheme, and therefore it's the current layout that is the issue. Okay, thank you. Is that okay, thank Councillor you. Rose? Rome? Yes, thank you, Janice. Thank you for that. Is everybody, anybody got any doubts um, about that? They're all clear on exactly what we're voting about, why we're voting. Mr. Weimer would like to come in, please, Chair. Mr. Weimer. Um, sorry, Chair. Um, just for, for um, a very quick question, and it's similar to this morning. Can I can I suggest that um, that the vote is a that it's on the basis of um, delegated reason for refusal, so the precise wording and the policies to be inputted um, are agreed with. Um, in this case, the proposer and seconder. So um, we're not, we're not, we, we know mem members and the committee are quite clear as to what the reason is, but I'd like to have um, delegate authority to get the precise details agreed by um, chair and, uh, not chair, because second, well, chair, because you've chaired it, yes, chair, vice, um, seconder and proposal. Sorry, I've got a little bit of flummox there, but I think you know where I'm coming I, from. Yeah. I know exactly where you're coming from, um, and uh, I, th I think, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's absolutely fine. Has anybody, uh, any of the members got anything against that? Right, that's fine. Okay. Okay, to uh, the vote. If go you to could... the vote. Thank you, Chair. If you can confirm that you have heard the debate, and let me know if you're voting for or against the refusal. Councillor Abbott. I have heard the debate and I am voting for the refusal. Thank you. Councillor Bazil. I've heard the debate and I'm voting for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Foss. I've heard the debate and I am going to abstain. Thank you. Councillor Hodgson. I have heard the debate and I'm voting for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Holway. I've heard the debate and I'm voting against refusal. Thank you. Councillor Kemp. I've heard the debate and I'm voting uh, for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Long. I have heard all the debate and I'm voting for refusal. Councillor Callaghan. I've heard the debate and I'm voting for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Pringle. I've heard the debate and I'm voting for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Rowe. I've heard the debate and I'm, I'm voting for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. I've heard the debate and I'm voting for refusal. Thank you. That is nine for refusal, one against and one abstination. Therefore. So, therefore, that application is refused. Okay. Thank you. Does everyone five seconds, or do we carry straight on into uh, into the rest of the agenda? Carry straight on, Mr. Chair, please. Right. Carry straight oh. on. I got a meeting at five. Okay. Let's go on to item ten. Will it be? Yes, it will. Uh, where we to? Uh, just a second. Uh, Going back, so I think it's item seven now. Sorry, beg your pardon. Yes. Um, which is the, oh, um, sorry, the, I've got the, the something something's opt up on the wrong tree. Yes, remind us it's, it's the um 
It's the um, uh, first off is the uh, planning performance indicators. Yeah, planning performance. I've my screen, my big screen suddenly went black. So I've sorry. Okay, I'll get it back up. So that will be Pat. Yep. Yes, Chairman. Shall I, shall I just come in and start? You're on mute. I don't know what you're saying, but I'm assuming you're saying that's okay. I tell you what I'm saying. The technology <laughs> let me down just when I didn't want it to. <laughs> right. No problem. Karen. Okay, members. Um, if I st uh, it's agenda item seven, which is the first, is page thirty-one. I'll quickly go through um, go through these. There's, then I'd like to talk about some um, some other information I've got that's quite interesting. So the top, for the first four graphs are um, targets for the top two are what we've got with extensions of time, including majors and non-majors on on target, and they're they're absolutely fine. Um, the Second set of graphs, so four and five, are where we are um, without an extension of time. The, the fundamental reason why, or one of the reasons why quarter one dropped significantly is we um, was taking account of the delays that would have come from um, lockdown because we, we had we had a period of um, four, four to six weeks where we weren't putting adverts up until we got to the stage where the regulations had changed so that parish councils could hold remote meetings. So I'm not at all surprised that the non-majors without an extension of time dropped because um, we knew that would happen because of the, the, the actions we took in response to the, the lockdown in March. Um, the number of applications registered, well, Clearly, there was there was a downturn in April, um, and because of that, we man we um, determined quite a lot of applications in April. If you look at um, table P9, so the workload went down. Um, May was then a relatively normal month, but then June, we saw more applications coming in than we had in any other month um, uh, um, from that graph, which is the, the um, April 2000 and 18, so this is um, a significant number. And if I can, I can give you an up-to-date figure on that. As of the end of August, in this calendar year, so January through to August, we'd received 1,740 um, ap valid applications. That compares to 1,693 the year before, so 2019, and 15, uh, 1,654 the year before that. So this year, even with um, the issues around COVID, since from January to the end of August, we are almost we are 47 applications up on last year, and best part of 100 applications up on the year before. So um, overall, it hasn't really affected the number of applications coming in. But what I would uh, what I would say, and this is borne out a little bit with the um, graph P10. Whilst our application numbers are up, the fee income is down, and it's primarily because the um, the number, not the number, the majority of applications we're getting in are small scale householder applications, and um, with most of the allocated sites being um, already got consent, there aren't that many large applications coming in. So that's why fee income is down, but applications are up. Um, Anecdotally, um, what myself and a number of other colleagues in the southwest are uh, are thinking is that one of the potential implications of COVID is obviously a lot more people, not everybody, a lot more people are working from home, and we think we're seeing quite a few applications to um, adapt and extend um, dwellings. To facilitate easier work, e e um, make it easier for people to work at home. So I think that might have something to to do with the increased number of applications. But we'll we'll see how that bears out. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of the, it, although we've had a, um, if I'm allowed to describe it as a bumper month of applications in in June and then a similarly high number in in July, you'll see quite a steep rise in in the numbers registered from May to June. But the 
the overall planning workload from May to June hasn't seen such a steep rise, which is a is a clear indication to me that we we were determining um, more applications than than were coming in. The reason why the number of applications determined in May dropped is that that would have been those applications that came in in March that were then delayed because we didn't do the publicity because of lockdown. So um, it's not that our performance dropped in May, it's simply that there weren't the applications um, there that were ready to go because the publicity hasn't ex hadn't expired. Um, the income for, for pre-apps is, is relatively low in this quarter because um, we had to stop in March and April, March and April accepting pre-apps and dealing with them because we, we generally didn't know how we were going to deal with it until we worked out how we were going to get on site, when we could go out on site. They're now coming back in, as you can see the um, from the the table below. We didn't have any in April, May, but there's a an, um, the ones received in May, June, Jul May, June, July, and August are still above um, above last year's levels. So that that is picking up. Um, and the, it is the, all the feedback I'm getting is that is working really well with um, predominantly Lucy Hall dealing with most of the pre-apps that, that they get it they're getting dealt with a lot more quickly and that they I think it is actually starting to attract more coming in because the agents are happy with this with the, the service they're getting and the final um, the final set of three tables on on the next page page. 32 um, is enforcement. Um, so in Q1, there was a little bit, there was a big, a bigger amount came in in Q4, new cases, lesser in um, in Q1 of this year. The the number of cases closed is still more than the number of cases coming in. So there is a gradual reduction in um, outstanding cases. They, the, the, to, I'll be honest, the reduction isn't as dramatic as I was hoping it would be at this point, um, but I, I, I do acknowledge that there are a number of the enforcement team that were doing other duties during certain parts of lockdown in the early part of COVID, in particular um, um, Chris Booty and Trevor. So the, the, so the team, the, the amount of people in the team was, was diminished slightly, so I'm, I'm actually quite pleased that there's still a reduction in overall um, numbers, even though with a, a slight reduction in um, in capacity over certain times. Um, happy to answer any questions. Patrick, can I ask a question, please? Sorry, I haven't got it in the box, but um, I was just wondering how we're doing with our the, um, the JLP and our uh, major developments um, on a five-year land supply. Because we've got a few that's still outstanding, I take it, that haven't been applied for. Um, I'll answer that as best as I can. The the annual monitoring report, which which looks into both both elements of our five year supply in terms of what the five year supply is and the fi and the housing delivery test, uh, is being work is is being worked on by the um, combination of the JLP team and um, the. Um, the, the um, this policy team at, um, at South Hams. My understanding is that we we are confident that we'll have a five year supply and confident we're still meeting the the delivery test. But I haven't seen those final figures. They are being worked on at the moment. But I I've heard nothing that would suggest um, anything to be concerned about. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Chairman, if there are no other questions, shall I go straight on to the appeals? Yeah, and I've just chosen my most of my arrow around. Yes, please carry on. Okay, well, I'll be relatively brief and then try and answer any questions if members have got any particular questions on any particular of these these appeals, or if there are any that you if if you if you, when you get an perhaps I'll start with this one. If you get an if you see an appeal decision come through, and you think it raises really interesting points, and you'd like a a far a more Either to have a have a debate about it in chamber, in which case I'll, I'll, we can we can send something around saying this is a briefing you know, and this is what we'd like to discuss and discuss it at this point. Um, or if there's any that crop up and you want me to do some um, facilitate greater debate at the next meeting, then by all means do so. Um, but I, I, 
I don't, I don't think that necessarily applies to any of these, but if you do get any that come in, by all means, ask and we'll, we'll do something a little bit more detailed. Um, the first one was a dismissed appeal at um, 8 Thelston Gardens, Dartmouth. And the, the inspector considered it would introduce a significant amount of hard landscaping and built form. Um, and as soon as they start saying this would be in Congress, you know it's heading for a refusal. Um, it, it would be in Congress, unrelated um, addition, um, causing harm to the character and appearance of the area, um, but didn't consider that the, the extent of overlooking and impact on the neighbour was, was significant, but that was um, refused. Uh, Cheryl, are you still on the call? I am, yes. Because you know more about this than I do. The, the, the appeal at Lutterburn where the inspector have now declined to determine. Yes. Can you just explain why? Because I think I know why, but I know you know it's yeah. straight away. There are two reasons. Essentially, they submitted a non-determination appeal. Um, the inspector accepted it, but told them it wasn't valid because they, they hadn't submitted all the documentation they needed to submit. Um, I have a current application, which members will probably be seeing next month. Um, so I, as the non-determination appeal wasn't yet valid, I inquired with PINs what status it was at, discussed with PINs about the fact that the application was submitted in 2017. Generally, you only have um, six months after your target date or extension of time date to make an appeal. We didn't have an agreed extension of time on this one, so they were almost 18 months over the six months they had to submit the appeal, so it could never be a valid appeal. So PINs basically sent it back. Sorry, that was a bit long-winded. <laughs> um, can, can I just point out that the fact we didn't have an extension of time wasn't because we hadn't asked for one, it was because it hadn't been agreed. Um, so they kind of shot themselves in the foot there, to be perfectly honest. Um, the, the next one is Lower Westerland Barnes. Now, for members who have read this, this is, this, is, uh, <laughs> this is an interesting one in that it's one where highways, the, the only reason for refusal, refusal with highways, and it wasn't the access onto the lane, but it was the inadequacy of the junction of that lane onto the, onto the, um, the main road. Um, the inspector took the view that whilst the change from an ancillary accommodation to a separate residential dwelling would have a slight increase in traffic um, generation, there were another, I think he said 12 properties that accessed onto that junction. There hadn't been a um, no evidence of accidents on that junction and the additional traffic was so marginal over what, what used that junction at that time that he didn't consider that it would increase um, harm to highway safety to a, to a, de to a degree that the refusal was um, justifiable. So that was, a, that was refused. He disagreed with highways. Highways was the only reason for refusal. Um, the next one, Land South Lock Out, I, I would urge all members to read this. It's an excellent, really well worded um, decision. Um, it was um, it particularly in support of the, um, the neighbourhood plan, in my view. It was a new dwelling. Um, the inspector concluded it didn't require a coastal location, nor did it meet an essential local need that couldn't be met elsewhere. And as such, it was an inappropriate location for development. Um, Personally, I think that was a really good, a really good decision. Um, the Parsonage Farm, Newton Ferris, that was a non-determination appeal, um, although officers at the time the appeal went in wouldn't have been supporting the uh, supporting the scheme. Um, the, the the main issues were effect on the character and appearance of the area, effect on the A and B. Um, road design and drainage. Um, the inspector went through all of those points um, in, in some detail and concluded that, that the development was acceptable. 
um, as you'll know, it, is, it was a reserve matter, so the principle wasn't um, wasn't an issue because outline consent had been granted. Um, and I think I'm right in saying the inspector was one that we we have relatively regularly and generally speaking does well reasoned uh, appeal decisions. So I don't think it's necessarily a, a road decision. I think it's just the inspector came to a different conclusion than we had as officers. Um, Dev two Devon Villas, Sulcombe was dismissed uh, fundamentally on impact on um, conservation area and A or and B. Um, I know that I know that at least one of the ward members is in the in the, the meeting. Um, Councillors Long or Pierce, anything to add on this one? I think it was a relatively straightforward, good decision. Nothing to add on it, Pat. Okay, thank you. Um, and finally. Um, this is one where this is this is a, a member overturn decision, if memory serves me right. I don't think there was a committee site visit there. I think I met the ward members there. I don't think it was a committee site visit because the, the site is so steep and quite difficult to um, to access. But mem members may recall it was one of Briney's applications. It was a a stone wall which had op a sort of open a public space on one side that was well treated and a footpath going up, um, extensive views at the top of that across to the to the to the water, um, and they'd they'd raised it in bits and put and um, redone a doorway in some bits, and it was effectively the rebuilding of that wall. Um, and the inspector essentially considered that it didn't have a detrimental detrimental impact and was um, was acceptable. It was one of those. Um, subjective decision ones. It's, it wasn't one that I was particularly um, upset that members went against officer recommendation because I think it was, it was, it, it's one of those subjective. Does it have an does it have an impact or not? Okay, again, Mark, was there anything you'd like to? Um, apart from obviously, Pat, you'll recognise I disagree with what the inspector said, and I think it's one of these classic situations where, you know, when you look at the it came about because of the development of the property, you know, adjacent to it. And I think, you know, looking more closely at the plans and looking at how it's going to be developed and just watching the site, you know, from a ward members, you know, yeah. of just, you know, keeping an eye on developments like that where they potentially impact um, views, you know, local amenity and things like that. Obviously disappointed, um, but you win some, you lose some. Yeah, and there was no cost application, so. No. No. I think we did have a site visit, Pat. Wasn't that the one with the footpath going down through a sort of scrubby wooded area beside the wall? No, Tom, we didn't, simply because um, it was the weather at the time was pretty atrocious, a bit like now, and it was felt that um, we might might lose a few members of DM. Okay, I thought we I saw the Tom pictures. We saw the pictures. That's what it was, Tom. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I've there. been. I went to one in Sulcombe, and I, and I thought it was this one. You, I mean, whether you whether you went on your own, Tom, I don't know. But you certainly you're, you're certainly oh. describing the, the right place. But I'm I can distinctly remember having conversations with a couple of members around the. Is it really safe to take members at? at this site given the weather and given how slippery the footpath would be and we decided it it wouldn't and we'd see how we get on with um with a good set of good set of photographs I, think yeah, that one, with a I remember the end of the footpath. i remember that that's that's what we did so um some might have gone and seen it um pat have you finished i have thank you um, unless there's any other questions about appeals or pis well, that's right field so um that's the end of the agenda then, isn't it? Uh, we've had a bit of a day again today. Um, thank you to the, all the members of the committee. Uh, I feel a little bit sorry for the officers. It's, I think it's 3-0 today, which is very unusual. But um, We don't take we'll... it personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's why they're there. <laughs> That's all, but everything worked out okay. But thank, thank everybody. It's been a okay. long day, as, as it is. Chairman, can I, Chairman, yeah. one, Vicky, once we're stopped broadcasting, mm. I think we're finished. So yes, please. Yeah. I declare the meeting closed.
Have we stopped broadcasting? Thank, Thank you, Karen. Okay.